Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really, really appreciate it that you were able to come and listen to some of our students speak from Northwestern at the student panel today. Um, just to give you a little bit of an overview of how we're going to do things tonight, I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction for myself. Um, the panelists are going to be able to introduce themselves as well. And I'm going to give a little bit of an overview of Northwestern, some things about Chicago, Evanston, about our academics, and then finishing off a little bit with admissions and financial aid related things. And then from then on, we're going to be able to answer any and all the questions that you have. Feel free to send over any questions you have once they pop into your head. You don't have to wait until we're done with me giving the information session. Um, and yeah, so we can get the night started. Um, so hi, everybody. My name is Patrick. I am currently an RTBF and economics major here at Northwestern, graduating this year. I'm originally from, from Mount Prospect, Illinois. Um, and just some things that you know I do around campus. I'm a part of Studio 22 um, and just really do a lot of film related things. Uh, but Kendall, do you want to start us off for your introduction and popcorn over to somebody else? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Patrick. Hi, everyone. My name is Kendall. I am a senior in the School of Education and Social Policy. My major concentration is human development and psychological services, and I have minors in Spanish and legal studies. So that sounds like a lot. Happy to answer questions on any of those. Um, one thing I do when I'm not, you know, doing events with the admissions office is I work as a student ambassador for our study abroad office. So Rachel, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm a junior in the Middle School of Journalism, studying journalism with minors in theater and psychology, and I'm pursuing the IMC certificate. Um, when I'm not doing panels like this, I'm involved in the Jewish Theater Ensemble, the Dolphin Show, and North by Northwestern, um, and I will pass it to Isaiah. Hi, my name is Isaiah. I am a fourth year student from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I use he, him pronouns. I'm a theater major. And when I'm not doing panels, I am on Griffin's Tale Children's Repertory Theater, um, which is a group of students that adapt stories written by um, children in the Evanston and Chicago areas and then performs them at their schools. And then Samara, do you wanna go? Absolutely. Hello all, I'm Samara from San Francisco, California. I'm a third year here at Northwestern studying theater as my major and art theory and practice as one of my minors and entrepreneurship as the other minor. Um, so busy schedule. When I am not giving panels or tours here on campus, uh, I'm often doing videos for the Daily Northwestern as a journalist for them. And I believe that's all of us. Back to you, Patrick. Awesome, thank you so much everybody for joining us um, and for you know taking the time out to answer some questions about Northwestern. So kind of just to go give a little bit of an overview of Northwestern, let's maybe start off with the location itself. So we are situated right above the Chicago border in Evanston, Illinois, along Lake Michigan. Just I'd say like about a 45 minute train ride from the city center, um, which is Chicago's loop. Um, but the location is absolutely perfect. If you're looking for anything from like a homey college town to Evanston, or you're looking to explore in the city, you really kind of have the best of both options. Um, and, you know, students, it's a great advantage just because the city itself is so big, but even when you're looking for things that are more professional, so for example, internships and job opportunities, to have, have Chicago in your backyard um, is really, really a great experience. Um, and just some ways to maybe get into Chicago that I can explain. So we have the CTA and the Metro, which are our train systems, but we also have the NU shuttle that takes you down there um, to our Chicago campus where we have the law school and, um, this is my bad, where we have the law school and the medical school. Um, and that shuttle, also just a 45 minute train ride. So you can pop in some Netflix, listen to some music. I have a lovely view of Lake Michigan as you go down there. Um, yeah, and so to, to be able to be next to such a big city has been a great experience for me. And I'm sure that some of the other students here can share as well. Um, for academics, so kind of to dive into what the school structure itself looks like. So we have six academic schools here at Northwestern. Uh, we have the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences, which is our largest school, which houses various social sciences, sciences and humanities majors. Um, besides that, we have the School of Communication, which is mainly where we have theater and RTVF, but we also have some other majors in there, such as communications or communications disorders. Um, and there we have professors that teach courses who are well-known screenwriters, playwrights, um, and even actors at certain points. So um, if you're really looking for anything arts related, that is a perfect school for you. But kind of jumping off that, maybe music is, a, is more of your interest. We have the Bean School of Music, which is a conservatory style school, but with an access to a liberal arts education. Uh, in order to go into Beanin, you do have to have an audition. And as I should have mentioned this before, for theater, we actually don't require an audition. Um, our next school is McCormick School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And I think the most interesting part of McCormick itself is that it takes a whole brain engineering approach to ensure students that leave Northwestern as engineers also are able to be creative problem solvers. 
Um, we also have the Medill School of Journalism, Media, and Integrated Marketing Communications. So the longest name, but only really one major within that school, which is journalism itself. And the main focus of that program is storytelling, but it provides a great pre-professional atmosphere where you actually do have to take a quarter of your time here at Northwestern to pursue an internship. And I know students have either done it here in Evanston in Chicago or have gone to places such as San Francisco um, or New York to work at companies such as Instagram. So really the opportunities are endless for you there as well. And finally, our last school, school um, and our, probably our mightiest school is a, a School of Education and Social Policy. So really there students work to create change either within the classroom or outside of it in areas such as government, education or nonprofit work, but also some students do decide to go into business with our learning and organizational change major there. Um, and it's really a school is, that starts off with only about 50 students in an incoming class, but by the time that that class is graduating, there's over 200. So it's our most transferred into school as well. So as you can see, a lot of kind of a lot of students do come to realize that CESPI itself is a great school to be a part of. Um, and so all schools are also available to to you in terms of their classes. Just because you are within one school doesn't mean you're not able to take classes um, in others. And I'm sure there's going to be questions about double majors and things like that. We will which we'll address later on. And actually about 70% of our students choose to study another academic discipline. So it's not out of the ordinary to either double major, double minor um, while you're here at Northwestern. So I know I also probably understand that you've heard about our quarter system compared to a semester system, which is at other schools. And so just to kind of give an overview, a quarter system, it's basically seasonal. Um, and that's where we have four 10 week quarters throughout the year. So we have fall, spring, sorry, fall, winter, spring, and summer quarters. Um, and typically students don't really take summer classes. Uh, many do take the opportunity to do, an op uh, to do an internship opportunity, or they choose to maybe just work during that summer, but that's still an option to you if you wanted to do that. Um, and then, so in terms of a single quarter, you take about four classes per quarter. And so the best part about this is that a lot of semester students, say finish around say 40 courses by the time that they leave, but because of the quarter system, you're able to take about 48 by the time that you graduate. And you know, this offers a lot more opportunity to explore um, and really just kind of figure out what you may want to major in and take your time here at Northwestern to do so. So kind of diving a little bit more into the admissions process itself, we do have the Common and the Coalition app. Um, and the Common app typically opens at the beginning of August, so you still have some, a few months to go before you have to start writing essays and filling out that applica application, but we're really excited that you're already kind of looking at Northwestern so early in advance. Um, and both the Common and the Coalition app can be used to apply to multiple universities, just not just Northwestern. Um, and then kind of going a little bit into what ED and RD or early decision and regular decision look like. So typically early decision is gonna happen somewhere around November and you will learn by mid-December. Um, and then for regular decision will be at the beginning of January and you will learn by mid-March. Um, in terms of what early decision entails, this is basically a binding application to Northwestern. So say that you were accepted, you would have to withdraw any applications you have from other schools. But really we kind of encourage you to do early decision if you know that Northwestern is the right place for you and you've kind of been a diehard wildcat for years that you, for the years that you've been in high school and beforehand. But if you maybe aren't too sure and you're looking to just kind of take your time and make some decisions between schools, regular, regular decision is always an option for you. Um, and this again will happen at the beginning of January and then you'll have until mid-March to when you find out and then decisions are due somewhere around May, about around early May, my bad. And in terms of the parts of the application, um, Northwestern really commends itself in terms of, it is a holistic review process whenever we look at the application. So whether it's transcripts, um, test scores, uh, essays, letters of recommendation. We really are looking at your entire application, not just at one specific part of it. In terms of transcripts, we are looking obviously for academic rigor, um, but we are going to be looking at what your school offers in terms of courses, say clubs um, or AP classes. Um, so really it's it just attempting, it's trying to see that you're attempting to take the best courses at your school and, and what they offer. Um, in terms of standardized testing, we are still doing test optional policy. So. This is really just, if you are happy with the score that, score that you received, we are more than welcome to take it. However, we also do understand that we have been in a very difficult year in terms of the pandemic. Um, and it has, a lot of students haven't had the opportunity to take those tests. So we, if you are not able to submit a score that's not going to hinder your application in any way whatsoever, and we're just trying to understand you know, what the situation has brought to certain students. In terms of the Common App essay, um, this is going to be the same essay for all your schools that you apply to, but within Northwestern, there's also the Why Northwestern statement. And, you know, when in terms of the admissions process, this is really your one opportunity to personalize your application and demonstrate what you were going to get out of Northwestern and why you would be the perfect place for this. You know, it's also, uh, we as, as an admissions team are looking at in terms of, you know, is this student going to be the best fit for you, but it's also going to demonstrate to you maybe if Northwestern, you know, is, is going to be the optimal place for you as well as a student. In terms of letters of recommendation, we do require two letters of recommendation, one from a guidance counselor and one from a core, uh, core 
sorry, core subject teacher. Um, and so this is really just to make sure that you're providing a perspective about you as a person and also as you as a student. Um, you are welcome to submit more um, letters of recommendation. However, really quality is more than quantity. And we just wanna make sure that if you are submitting another one, that it's not just repeating say what another professor said about you beforehand and that it's adding something else to your application. So finally, jumping into financial aid. The biggest price tag, um, you know, it's, we do have the biggest price tag in terms of all the Big Ten schools, but we really do offer the most financial aid so students do not leave with as much debt compared to other Big Ten schools. And this is really um, through Northwestern's 100% demonstrated need. Um, they do offer a lot of financial aid to students in terms of your estimated family con contribution. And if you're not aware of what this is, this is basically a part of the FAFSA where you are able to calculate sort of, the government is able to calculate how much your family will be able to afford to give to university. Um, and then once you send that over, we, Northwestern is committed to meeting 100% of that need for you. And also we are a loan-free school. So the only sort of financial aid you'll be, be receiving will be through scholarships or grants. So basically you are not leaving with any debt um, once you leave at Northwestern. Um, another thing is we're also need blind. So you, the amount of need that you will need to have, that you will have to receive from the university, we do not take that into consideration when we look at your application. Um, and then also, if you do want to check out a little bit more about how much your family will be able to contribute, we do have a net price calculator available on our website. And this will give you a rough estimate, but definitely not an estimate, but not a final number. But feel free to check that out um, if you're a little bit more interested in the financial aid process and kind of looking, looking forward for yourself. But that's enough of a spiel about Northwestern and sort of kind of the overview. I would be happy to jump into what questions we have um, for these students. So. Our first question is, do you find that double majoring and double minoring in unrelated subjects like theater and science slash arts is not just possible, but but doable? Um, so if, Samara, do you want to jump into this for a little bit for theater major and art theory and the practice entrepreneurship minors? Absolutely, yeah. So like I said before, I am a theater major. I have two minors. One is the art theory and practice minor in Weinberg, and the other is the entrepreneurship minor in McCormick. So I'm repping three whole schools on my degree. Um, and it's honestly quite doable. I declared my, I'm in my third year here at Northwestern planning to graduate at the end of my fourth. I declared my two minors in December of 2020 and January of 2021, respectively, having pretty much just started both of them. And I finished my theater degree coming in with no extra credits from APs or anything, totally blank slate. Um, I finished, I finished my theater degree this quarter. So it is like a very like, doable process. Northwestern really focuses on making sure that you are getting what you want out of your academic progress. So that means that my requirements for my different minors and my different majors, even though they're in different schools, often overlap. So if I take an art class, for example, today I had oil painting, that counts both for my theater major and my art theory and practice minor because it is a uh, like performance-based or like design-based class. So that covers my design requirement in my theater major and my painting requirement under my art minor. Uh, so there's a lot of doubling that goes on. As well, these like requirements usually come with a general name tag. They're not a specific class. So like I said, I just had to take any course that was in design. It could have been a Siegel Center, like uh, not Siegel Center, it's the Visitor Center. A, uh, like the design studio, uh, I'm blanking on the name, but it is with an S. I think it is the Siegel Design Center. Google it. Um, the design center that is under McCormick, I could have taken a class there. I could have taken a lighting design class. I could have taken any other art class and all of them would have fallen under that requirement. And that is the same for math classes, for English requirements, for all of that as well. So yeah. Okay. Great, thank you so much. Um, we have another question in saying, did you come in already knowing what you wanted to major in? If not, how did Northwestern help you discover your current major? Um, Rachel, do you want to take this one? Yeah, absolutely. So I did come into Northwestern knowing what I wanted to major in. However, I sort of knew that it wasn't necessarily the only thing I wanted to study. Um, I knew that I had other interests and the way that the journalism major is created, it really gives you that space to sort of explore other areas. And that's the same for people who go in without a, a decided major. So you have that opportunity to really take uh, classes across disciplines. And I think that because of the quarter system, it really allows you to take those extra classes, take more classes um, that 
maybe like I took a linguistics class my fall quarter freshman year because I thought maybe I'll want to study linguistics. I took a Spanish class because I didn't know if I'd want to continue my studies in Spanish. So you really have that flexibility in your schedule to delve into subjects that you didn't really know about before. Um, and even when you do finally declare a major and you have um, plenty of time at the beginning of your college career to, you know, explore before you declare. Um, even once you do declare, you'll still have that opportunity to take classes and other things that might interest you. And that's really um, shows in how many students are, you know, practicing, uh, studying multiple different areas. It really gives you that opportunity to um, not just come into college knowing exactly what you want to do. Plenty of people come in not knowing and sort of learning along the way. Great, thank you so much. This is actually a really nice segue into our next question, which is what happens if you change your mind about your academic path once you get to campus? And I can actually take this one. Um, so I, right now I'm an RTBF and econ major within Weinberg and School of Com, but I actually came in as a biomedical engineering student in McCormick School of Engineering. So, you know, you're right. There's, I think there's a lot of students that come in either not knowing what they wanna do or they change their mind just kind of, and I think that's a very natural thing to do. Um, but for me, for example, after my first quarter, I just kind of came to realize I wasn't as interested in medicine as I thought I was. So basically the way that um, changing your academic career path looks, either if it's a major within the same school, that's fairly simple. You just really have to kind of, you have to apply for that major again, in terms of just really putting in a slip into the office and just talking with an advisor about you transferring over the major. But in terms of doing an interdisciplinary, sorry, an interschool transfer, um, the way it's gonna work is that you're going to talk to your advisor within the school you're in right now. So for example, is me talking to a McCormick advisor, me kind of discussing, you know, what I would like to do in the future, basically just getting a signature from them, then talking to an advisor to the school that I wanted to switch into, which at the time was Weinberg, and just chatting with them, you know, about what I would like to pursue within Weinberg, what my career goals maybe are in terms of, or even in terms of classes, chatting with them for a little bit. And then once you get that form signed, you basically just have another quarter where you're kind of in limbo in between the two schools. Um, and there it's just making sure that you're performing well in your academics, um, and then if you do everything well there, then on to the next quarter, you're going to be into, into the school that you wanted to apply for. There's a little bit more difficulty in terms of other schools, such as McCormick, that require a little bit more of a harsh curriculum. Um, but in terms of um, other schools, it's it hasn't been too difficult, at least for me, um, in terms of transferring it over into other, into other ones. Um, another question that I have is, hi, I was just wondering how flexible the curriculum is. Would it be possible to major in something like mechanical engineering, yet still complete all the prereqs for med school? Thank you. So I know that we don't have anything med school related, but Kendall, I know that you are doing a HTC major and then kind of trying to do pre-law related things. So I was wondering if you wanted to tackle this, this, message, this question. Yeah, can you repeat the main part of that question again? I know there was yeah, another totally. couple My of bad. journeys. I wanna make sure I answer um, it right. I was just wondering how flexible the curriculum was. Yeah, awesome. So that's kind of been touched on already by a lot of people um, talking about their different sorts of majors, their different interests and making sure that everything is able to be you know, worked on. And one thing that hasn't really been said yet that I'll touch on about flexibility for me specifically, um, I have one major in the School of Education and Social Policy. I also have two majors in our Weinberg School of Arts and Sciences and as Patrick said, I'm technically pre-law. So being pre-law at Northwestern, I didn't have to declare anything. That's why I did it in quotation marks um, because Northwestern doesn't have a specific pre-law track. Pre-med is a little bit different. There are you know, advisors and people that make sure you're on the right track, but for pre-law it was sort of how do I want to define pre-law as myself? So one of my main minors is legal studies, and that was sort of how I chose to sort of take pre-law and make it my own. Um, so like Samara said earlier, I was able to sort of double count some of my um, courses for my human development and psychological services major, also with my legal studies minor, and some of my Spanish courses also sort of double counted. So that's what um, Northwestern has a system called distribution requirements, or we say distro requirements. Northwestern's very big on abbreviations here. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of abbreviations and acronyms for things. So distro requirements are sort of that liberal arts um, school, what's typical of a liberal arts school. Most schools, um, at least in Northwestern, some of the requirements different by school, but at least for me, I had to take credits in formal sciences, which is like math, um, linguistics, natural sciences, history, ethics and values, I'm forgetting the last one. They changed a little bit since I was a freshman um, and the SESB requirements are a little bit different than everyone else. So part of that flexibility was being able to take courses in a lot of those different distribution areas. And sometimes, you know, it came across something maybe I hadn't taken before. I had to take a class called Climate Catastrophes and Earth History, which was like super cool and not related to anything I was currently studying, but was still a really interesting way to broaden my 
um, experience here. So that was a cool way to sort of combine a lot of different things, but also like other people have said, being able to double count and being able to move around has been a really incredible part of my experience and it sort of allowed me to define what I want my major to be and what I want my academic path to be. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, Isaiah, I have a question for you. In terms of being in a theater major and kind of being a student and a performer at the same time, I'm wondering how maybe you have juggled that while you're in your time at Northwestern, um, and maybe how that's influenced the things you want to pursue after college. Yes, absolutely. Um, first, I just want to say, I'm sorry if you can hear my roommate seeing in the background the high volume of acapella student, acapella um, participants, musical theater students, being in students means that your likelihood of living with someone with an amazing voice is very high. Um, but in terms of theater, doing theater, um, balancing extracurricular theater with uh, the rigor of the Northwestern academic curriculum, I can definitely speak to that. So um, there are three quarters in a year. Every quarter you have something called generals, which is a group of auditions that are held for every show happening that quarter. It would be shocking to me to find out that there were fewer than 15 shows auditioning for any given quarter. So that is a lot of opportunity to be in a show if that's what you want to do. Um, if you want a costume design for a show, if you want a lighting design direct, produce to anything related to theater, those options are totally available. Um, there aren't enough theater majors to go around to fill all of these spots. So even if you are interested in doing one of these, uh, filling one of these roles, but you're not like, a theater major or always doing theater. Um, I met one of my closest friends at Northwestern. She's actually an econ major, but she was in a show that we did together. Um, however, there is no sort of culture surrounding, you know, if you don't, if you take a quarter off to focus on academics, you know, you're not a true member of the theater community. Um, that's not the way it is. Um, you can very much balance doing theater and academics by creating your own schedule um, in that sense. Also, there are so many ways to get involved in performance without doing shows. So for example, Griffin's Tale, which I mentioned um, in my intro, we rehearse on Sundays from 12 to four. So if you're taking a quarter and you're like, you know, I'm in a lot of classes this quarter, I don't know that doing rehearsals five days a week from six to 10 p.m. is really what I wanna do, but I still wanna perform. There are countless groups on campus where that that is very much a possibility. We have improv, 14 acapella groups, plus the mediocre tones, which is for people who maybe don't fit into the typical acapella vocal um, standard. Um, there are, there's a Commedia dell'arte troupe. There's really anything that you can possibly imagine um, to get involved in. So it's very much choose your own adventure in regards to finding the right balance between performance and academics. Awesome, thank you so much. So we have a question actually about internships and research opportunities. How does Northwestern help students find internship and research opportunities? Rachel, do you wanna tackle this one? Absolutely. So being located very close to Chicago, it really is uh, just a great way to access a big city where there are many opportunities for internships. Um, we also have Chicago Field Studies, which is a program through the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences, where they will set you up with an organization in Chicago. And you're basically working there, uh, learning the ropes of anything that might interest you, whether it's from the arts to civic engagement. Um, and also the Northwestern Career Advising Office is always there to lend a helping hand. I have found that it's so helpful. I've gone for mock interviews um, and they also just have a great database of different companies that have internship opportunities. And then as far as research, there are really two ways to get involved in research. Um, you can reach out to a professor whose work really excites you, or if there, uh, if there's something that interests you that you don't necessarily see being studied yet, you can go to the undergraduate research grant um, or the undergraduate research office and propose that idea to them. And they're more than happy to work with students to figure out how they can do that for you. Um, so for example, my friend Harlem was really interested in understanding like how to get involved in a psychology lab. And she took a class with Professor Renee Englund who specifically teaches psychology of beauty and psychology of gender. She absolutely loved the material they were covering and asked if there was any way to get involved in the lab. And now she works in that lab, is working on the projects, um, right with the professor and uh, really has her hand in understanding uh, 
what goes into research. And, you know, when I came to Northwestern, I really thought I'm studying journalism. There's no way I'm going to be doing, um, doing like any sort of lab work, any sort of research. Um, and what I didn't realize was that research is so multidisciplinary, whether it's in civic engagement, as I said, or the arts or, um, or actual like chemistry or psychology. There's so, uh, so many professors are so passionate about the work that they're doing in research and are more than willing to, uh, you know, invite students on board. Great, thank you so much. Um, so another question we have is how do students view the quarter system at Northwestern? Is it generally liked? Samara, do you want to take this one? Yeah, yeah. Um, I personally love the quarter system. I really like it. And I know that a lot of my friends enjoy it as well. It really allows you to do a deep dive in anything you want to do. Uh, a lot of us have been talking about like, the different classes we've been taking. And I think the quarter system, you know, just mathematically speaking, you take more classes than your friends on the semester system. You get more of those opportunities to take electives that you may not have had the chance to take if you were on the semester system. It 10 weeks kind of feels scary when you say it out loud, you know, it feels like, oh my God, how do you even learn that much in that much time? But it really doesn't feel like it when you're in it. Our professors are all required to hold office hours. So if you do hit a, a point in the quarter where you're like, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. You can just drop in there. They are so happy to talk to you. Our professors are here, not because they have to be, but because they love teaching and they love their students. Um, and I think that's something that's really unique to Northwestern in that respect. Um, as well, the quarter system, with the quarter system, let's say like we have other resources like the library and peer tutoring, all of which you are highly encouraged to take advantage of. Um, as well, we have sequences, which is really big. So if a professor ever feels that their class is too large to fit into 10 weeks, they can create a sequence. You'll see this a lot with introduction level courses. So like languages are generally spread out over entire years or two years, um, and you would just take each section, uh, fall, winter, spring. The acting sequence in the theater major is the same. You take for two years each level um, every quarter. And if you get halfway through a sequence and you're like, I don't wanna do this anymore, you still get the credits for the classes you've taken and those still go to whatever degree, you just don't get the mark of the sequence being finished. But that also allows you to go even more in depth if you're worried about the 10 week curriculum. So I think it's pretty universally, lo universally loved here at Northwestern. It's a big perk if you're looking to do a lot of exploration. Great, thank you so much. So in terms of distribution requirements, we're gonna circle back to those. How were all of your experiences with the distribution requirements? Did they help inspire any of you to connect, continue, sorry, continue studying a particular subject? Kendall and Isaiah, do you maybe wanna tackle this one together? Sure, I can jump in because I kind of talked about my distros a little bit already. Um, so like I said, it was sort of an opportunity for me, not even to just find new things that I was interested in, but just sort of broaden my mindset a little bit. And another thing that's interesting about the quarter system and the fact that everyone is taking so many different things in different areas, you're able to connect a lot of your different courses to areas that you didn't think would be possible. Um, for example, I took my first year, I took an ethics and values distro called Intro to Philosophy. Um, and then I followed that up. I was sort of interested in it. So I took philosophy of race and racism um, at the end of my freshman year. And the things I learned in that class were really instrumental in sort of building on things I talked about in other classes when we learned about education, talking about education disparities in Chicago. I was able to reference some of the um, authors I had read in those other distribution classes. Um, I also took a class called the Sociology of Gender for another one of my distribution requirements. I forget what that covered. But I, it was a distribution requirement, and that also provided me with a pretty nice framework when terms came up. Um, I learned about intersectionality in that course, and that came up a lot in my other courses. So I was able to sort of build on things, even though I wasn't majoring in sociology or philosophy, having those distribution requirements made the rest of my classes, you know, connect more, and I was able to make more connections with things. So Isaiah, I don't know if you have any other experiences, maybe just leading you to things, but that's sort of been my experience. Yeah, I definitely want to echo everything Kendall said. Um, I've also found that distribution requirements have allowed me, they've sort of 
forced me to take classes that I just otherwise would never have taken, but have been so useful. Like, um, I took a class last, uh, two quarters ago that was on the politics of gender in television and like the way that, um, representation of women has been, has evolved over the course of television history since the creation of TV. And as somebody who wants to go into film and TV, that was really, really, useful for me um and it was within the gender it was offered as a gender studies class it wouldn't have been on any you know theater or rtbf co course list and so it really just allowed me it forced me um to think more broadly about the types of things that i'm studying about what i'm going into and to be multi multidisciplinary in my approach towards what i love so Great, thank you both. Um, so we have a question in terms of, I understand that freshmen are housed on campus in two separate areas. What does the school do to help connect these students? So um, there is a rumor within Northwestern that North and South campus are kind of just really separate from each other and nobody interacts between the two. That's a complete lie, um, at least in my experience so far. Um, I think with really our campus is not that big. It just in full honesty, like compared to other Big Ten schools, it is puny um, and it is very, very easy to, go from north to south with my fast walking probably within like 15 minutes. Some others may be a little bit slower. Um, but in terms of sort of just how Northwestern works to like have these students connect with each other from, you know, both sides of the campus, really, North, I think Norris University Center is just the best place ever. Um, so it's like smack dab in the middle of campus. It's just like our, it's like a center basically that has coffee, has food, people are able to do homework there. A lot of organizations actually house their meetings there for, so for a lot of like Stuco, um, they'll host their meetings there overnight. Um, and it's just, uh, I think it's a perfect place to sort of just for everybody to go and like meet up in the middle of campus. But in terms of just like other things, um, there's, you know, in order for you to like say, if you want to work out, like there are certain gyms available on South campus, but like if you like to go to a gym, you'd have to go North um, to Henry Crown. Um, and there's kind of just a massive sports pavilion. The garage is also there in terms of like, if you're interested in entrepreneurship things. Um, but really another way that you just connect with students is just through classes. So like, for example, I'm in School of Communication, but there is a communication building up North. So I'm really kind of forced to go up north sometimes. Um, and you know, it's it's sort of just through the classes you're gonna be taking and the ones that you choose, they could really be all over campus. So just for example, like if you're just a STEM major, that doesn't mean that you're not necessarily gonna have classes South Campus for distribution requirements or other STEM courses. Um, yeah, so I think that really there's no sort of divide between the two and there's a lot of points of communication that you can have there. Anybody else wanna add anything else or did I kind of cover all the stuff? All good, great. Um, so I have a question about the winters. How brutal are they? Uh, Rachel, do you want to tackle this? You're from Florida. Yeah, definitely. So as Patrick said, I'm from Florida. I knew what I was getting into when I applied to Northwestern. I heard everyone I told who I was going to school in Chicago, they all told me that's going to be a rough winter for you. And I totally get it. Um, but I also was at the point in my life where I kind of wanted seasons. Like I kind of didn't like the summer, 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 extra summer uh, rotation in Florida. Um, and being in Chicago, I really use my friends as sort of like my, uh, my guides through the winter. Um, many people here are from colder climates, whether they're from the Chicago area or um, New York, anywhere that, you know, gets snow. Um, and I would text in the morning and ask, it's 40 degrees outside, what does that mean I wear? Um, and they would text me back telling me how to layer. And within a couple months, I sort of got the hang of layering and it's definitely survivable. I mean, we've all been through it a few times. And as long as you know, like to wear a winter coat when it's cold outside. Um, and, you know, sometimes you have to like wear a scarf and, uh, and just walk fast. And uh, it really, it, it does get a little cold, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I've really found that being around other people has made the winter a lot warmer, as cheesy as that sounds. Um, but, you know, just being, um, everyone's sort of in the same boat. We all understand that, like, this is how winter is. Um, but being in Evanston, being around other college students and having those warm breaks in dining halls or um, in your room, uh, in your bedroom with your roommate, that is really like, it doesn't feel like the end of the world. Um, and I, I love the winter. I love to play in the snow still and my roommates make fun of me. Um, but it's definitely survivable and you can do it. I believe in you. 
Yeah, also, I'm from Illinois, I know. But, like, for real, they don't get that. Like, I mean, it's cozy. Like, you'll survive it. Then, like, they put lights up on the trees throughout the winter, so it kind of makes it a little bit better. You'll be fine, for real. Um, in terms of, so we have a question about how would you describe the atmosphere at Northwestern? Samara, do you want to go over this one? Yes, I can. Um, I think one thing that has rung true for me in my past three years was something I actually heard in an info session when I was looking at Northwestern, which was that we don't compete, we collaborate. And it was from the theater major session. And I remember being like, that's such a cheesy line. Like what, that's just fodder for my why Northwestern. That can't be true. Uh, and then I got here and it was, and it was super wild. Everyone here is constantly like hanging out on the lake fill when it's nice out, doing homework in hammocks. It's like, if you go to Northwestern, you will at some point purchase a hammock. It's just going to happen. Um, and you just have to let it. Um, for those beautiful lake fill days where everyone is out there using the fire pit and doing homework together, our peer tutoring uh, program is thriving, both with people going there for help, but also tutoring being very welcome, uh, welcoming to students and it being a very safe space to get help. As I said earlier, our professors are here because they love teaching, not because they're here for the research. They can do that at a lot of places, but they know that if they come here, their students are like faithful to their programs, faithful to their academics and are excited about the material. Um, so it is a place that just loves learning, loves learning from each other. Um, it's also like in terms of um, just getting to know people like from different backgrounds. Um, it was really exciting to me. Uh, my first day, like just looking at my, uh, my peer advisory group, which is the group that you get put with an orientation to kind of help you make friends in those first few weeks. Um, just like the sheer amount of diversity in that group alone from where people were either in the United States or not, where people were coming from in terms of their like knowledge of theater, especially like in a department that seems so specialized, um, as well as like, you know, other factors of diversity. So that was really exciting uh, for me who had come from like a bubble of San Francisco, California, where everyone is kind of the same. Um, but yeah, Northwestern is just a really open and lovely place. And I think like you would expect a lot of like drama and competitiveness from such a highly rigorous school. And like, yeah, the academics are hard, but everyone here wants you to succeed and wants to see you do your best. Awesome, thank you. So for this next question, we can do like a little roundabout maybe. Um, what are some of your favorite Northwestern traditions? Kendall, do you want to start? Yeah, um, my favorite tradition is something called Dillo Day, which is Northwestern's completely student-run music festival. Um, it happens during our spring quarter. Last year it was virtual, and this year it's going to be virtual. So I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak more towards the when it's not virtual, what it looks like part of it. Um, but basically, we have this stretch of land on our campus that borders Lake Michigan. We've called it the Lake Fill a couple times here. And there are stages set up. Usually, two stages on this Lake Fill. Artists come and perform. We've had people. Um, such as Daniel Caesar, I believe Kendrick Lamar performed when he was younger, um, like not younger, but like before he became really famous. But, um, and I, like I said, it's all student run. So the students are the ones picking the artists. They list, we do polls to kind of figure out um, who's gonna come, but it's also just a fun day. In addition to the stages, there's like um, booths out to get food. Um, I think there was a Ferris wheel my sophomore year, if I remember correctly. A lot of other student art goes on with it. Um, it's just a cool way for the entire campus to come together and hang out and enjoy the beautiful spring weather. I also think it's one of the only days where the libraries close in the middle of the day because no one's there. Everyone's out with their friends having a great time listening to music. So it's definitely one of my favorite traditions and I'm sure even this year virtual, it's gonna be just as fun. Um, everyone's safely enjoying a concert, you know, in the ways that they want to. So Rachel, do you have a tradition you wanna share? Sure. I think if you asked me this three years ago, I definitely wouldn't say this, um, but I really have gotten into sports here at Northwestern. I absolutely love going to games, um, whether they're in Chicago or in Evanston. And one of my favorite traditions is any day at Wrigley. Um, it's where the university sends any students who want to go to Wrigley Field to watch the Cubs game. Um, and I went my first year at Northwestern uh, and it was just the most fun. There were like, I think, a thousand Northwestern students, something along those lines. Um, and we all had our purple Cubs hats that we got to wear. Um, and really that spirit goes through the rest of our Northwestern athletics. And um, whether you're at football games, basketball games, supporting women's lacrosse, um, 
there's always that sense of school spirit and purple pride um, that I really love uh, taking part in. And I'll pass it to Samara. Yeah, mine is a super classic Northwestern favorite, which is painting the rock. Um, I it's something I really miss and like it has actually continued into our virtual world you will see the rock changing uh, every once in a while which has been really exciting um, for those of you who don't know the tradition of painting the rock was based on like years and years and years ago so there used to be a, like fountain in the kind of center of campus and uh, they accidentally left the pipes on over winter the pipes explode the fountain can't be used again but it's beautiful. So they kind of just keep it there uh, for looks. And then some freshmen uh, come in the middle of the night and they paint over it just for fun. They think it's going to be funny. Super not funny. They have to kind of clean up their mess. But then four years later, when they are graduating, they're like, you know what? That's our artistic expression. And they, on the night of their graduation, painted that fountain again. Um, and it kind of from then became a tradition of every time you have something you want to uh, share or something you feel is very important for the community you just go you have to stand by the rock like someone from you or your team has to stand by it for 24 hours there is a camera if you look up a uh, northwestern rock camera you will see a live stream of the rock um, and that's how you can make sure that people are spending their 24 hours and at the end of the 24 hours usually in the dead of night at midnight you paint it with whatever you would like there's really no rules um, I've done it twice now, uh, my freshman and sophomore year, and it was so much fun. Both of them were in the dead of winter. So like to that winter point, I'm from California and I went out there mid-January polar vortex season and painted that rock and I'm still standing. Um, but it's a great community kind of builder. And I think the preparation, I did it with my residential college. And as a freshman, I, it was like one of the first things I did with them. And it was the way that I made most of my friends was like standing by that rock and getting to know them and having that opportunity to chat and then making this beautiful painting together. So I have a lot of fun memories of that. Isaiah? Yes, a tradition that I think we would be remiss not to touch on would be dance marathon. Um, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's 30 hours of dancing in a tent right outside of Norris University Center. They build up to it the whole year. The second you arrive on campus, there will be people um, enthusiastically encouraging you to participate. And um, what they do is they announce their cause like a year in advance they raise money for a year um you raise money to participate in it it's really um they give you so many resources so many ways to reach out so it's not prohibitive um and then uh to celebrate the money that you raise they have 30 hours of dancing um it is i uh, when I haven't participated in it, campus just feels totally quiet and isolated because everybody is in the tent. Um, whatever music they're playing in the tent is what you're listening to, no matter where you are on campus, because it's so loud. And it just definitely is a tradition that totally defines Northwestern. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. So the next question is, how do you feel Northwestern has helped you grow both academically and as a person? Rachel, do you want to get this one? Yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely just looking back at my first year at Northwestern, I see myself as sort of like a shy, um, sort of nervous to meet people and, um, and to really get into those leadership positions. Um, and I think like in these past three years, I've really had the opportunity to get into those positions. Uh, I currently serve as the executive director of my theater board, the Jewish Theater Ensemble. And while I used to say that I was quieter in situations where I'm around a lot of louder people and theater people are definitely a bunch of louder people, um, I've found myself sort of step into my, sh my sorry, not an insult, I'm a theater person. Um, but when you're around other theater people, you definitely do feel like you're sort of the quieter person in the room when you are like a shyer personality like me. Um, and I've found that I've really had the opportunity to step into those roles, whether it's producing a show uh, and completely like overseeing, collaborating with a team or um, being an editor of North by Northwestern magazine and having that opportunity to really 
uh, direct where a magazine, where our magazine is going and what we're covering. I feel like I've had so many more opportunities to, um, to really just shine. And like, there are so many opportunities that every Northwestern student has had that opportunity um, because there are countless clubs and countless academics and opportunities to get involved in research and whatnot that everyone sort of has um, the opportunity to, yeah, I guess grow into, into whatever that it is they wanna be, whether that's a leader or um, an artist or a engineer, you really have that opportunity to come out of Northwestern with things that you're proud of and experiences that will help you and guide you through the rest of your uh, professional life. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, Isaiah, do you wanna maybe talk a little bit more about Chicago, how often you venture into the city? Um, maybe how often you maybe go with a group of friends to like explore other things within the city, maybe both academically and non academically. Yes, I would love to. So um, we are about less than two miles away from the Chicago city limit um, and about 10 miles away from the heart of Chicago. Um, it is no more than a 45 to 50 minute train ride to really get anywhere in the city um, as far as you need to go. Um, as a theater major, as uh, somebody who's taken a lot of art history classes, um, I have had to go into the city for class a lot. Um, no matter where you're gonna go see a show, you are gonna be able to get a student ticket for $5 to $20. So it's really accessible to go see shows in the, sh in the city. Um, same with art museums, you are gonna be able to get into those for free or for a heavily discounted price with your um, Northwestern an ID. So you get to explore the city on a student's budget, which was very important for me and so helpful. But even um, in a social aspect, I actually, this might be a little bit more than usual, but I find myself in the city like once a week. Um, I'll just take the train. It's a $2.50 ride either way. And you just take the train, find yourself in the city, um, go out to eat, you know, visit with friends. I have friends who go to Loyola and DePaul. They have very different college experiences. So it's so fun to like get to go and hang out with them and experience their college experiences. And also just on a personal note, I'm a big walker. I take walks every day, long walks. And because of how much I walk, I find myself in Chicago just because it is so close. So I'll just be walking and then pick up dinner at a Chicago restaurant and then walk it right back home. Great, thank you. Um, so our next question is, what is a unique opportunity or experience you have had at Northwestern? Kendall, it's Mara, do you want to tackle this one? Sure, um, I'll start. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, you go, you go. <laughs> okay, I'll start. Um, so we've kind of touched on this a little bit already, but I am not a STEM person. Um, my major is in the School of Education, Social Policy. I'm a big psychology law. I came into Northwestern not expecting that I would do research. I had this vision in my head that research was people in lab coats mixing stuff in beakers and hoping things didn't explode. And that definitely was not my career path, my academic interest. Um, but I ended up actually doing a couple of research projects for my classes that I was in. And they ended up being like looking at old newspapers and looking at patterns and things. So I had a sort of research base in my classes for final projects that I was doing. And I realized, huh, this is actually pretty interesting. And there are ways to do research that aren't, you know, with lab coats. So I ended up, um, when I went abroad, I studied abroad also and got to do some research there. So when I came back to campus, I was really interested in ways that I could keep doing this sort of research, connecting what I had learned abroad, but also back here at Northwestern. And I ended up meeting with someone from the Office of Undergraduate Research, one of the advisors there. And she told me about a program in which I could basically design my own research and then get paid to research what I wanted over the summer. Um, so I applied for that grant. I had never written a research grant before, but luckily the Office of Undergraduate Research helped me through that. And I ended up winning the grant um, to basically research this one aspect of Chilean political history that was really interesting to me. Um, I spent my summer doing that and then was actually designed another grant this year to kind of follow up on this research and compare, do some political writings, um, but also, you know, touching on Spanish. So. That was something I did not think that I was going to be able to do at Northwestern, something really, really unique that the university paid me to research something I was interested in. And it's made me a better student. Um, I've gotten to do presentations, talk about my research. 
um, and just kind of changed my career path a little bit too. I'm looking more at research jobs, but also thinking about political things. But it was also a way to sort of combine all the things that I've been learning academically into one or two research projects and have the university sort of support me in that journey. So that was something really cool, a unique opportunity that I don't think is really available to a lot of other students. The university wants you to do research. We have millions of dollars that are just put aside for undergraduate research only, not for grad students, not for PhD students, for undergraduate research students of all disciplines. Um, so that's been something really cool and something I'm really, really grateful for. Tamara, I don't know if you have other things to share. Yeah, absolutely. Can you just repeat the question real fast? I had to plug my laptop in. <laughs> No problem. Um, so the question was, sorry, trying to find, was a unique opportunity or experience you have had at Northwestern? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think one thing I really love is that all the faculty here at Northwestern are generally active in their field and that's what allows like research and stuff to happen. And so with theater, I have a professor, David Bell, who um, is very highly regarded in theater. He's worked on and off Broadway um, for many, many years. And I took a directing the musical class with him and it was in a virtual world, but he actually made it able, he made it so that we could still do small things in person. So he actually booked out Windy City Playhouse for us of which he's on the board and we did the class there. Um, and that way we could go in person, we could do things on a stage, but it was so large and we had all the windows open and all of that. So it was still safe um, and it was a very small class. And so, you know, he really worked with us to make sure that we still got our full experience there. And because of that, like, I got to experience what I want to do for the rest of my life, which is directing musicals and directing um, on a real stage my junior year, um, just because he was gracious enough to take us there and make that opportunity happen for us. And this happens a lot in the theater department that like you'll have public performances and stuff, but I've not seen a department where the professor is not excited to bring you into their world. And so like I also had an earth, like a lot of the earth science classes, you'll actually go on field trips to different places in Illinois. And I had one that was supposed to, and then unfortunately that was like right when COVID hit. So that field trip got canceled. Um, but that Windy City Playhouse Day, like I still play it back and I'm like, oh my God, like I can't believe I got to do that and see that. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. Um, so our final question of the night for all of you is why Northwestern? Isaiah, do you wanna start? Yes, so I knew that I wanted to study theater. I have a one track mind, that's what I wanted to do. But I wanted to do it in an environment where I would be able to A, explore all of the aspects of theater that I could so I could make sure that I was going out into the world with a concrete idea of like what I wanted to bring to it and what specifically I could bring to the industry. Um, and Northwestern has absolutely been the best place for that. There are endless classes in any, I took a class that was basically on like, how to land a joke with a British accent. Like it sounds facetious, but that's essentially like what the class is. And that professor has a whole series of classes that are basically that. Um, but I also knew that I wanted to study theater around people who were doing totally different things because I wanted to be in an environment where I wasn't just around people who shared the same interest as me. And even among theater majors, even among other theater majors who are also only studying theater, I've absolutely found that to be true. Everybody comes to Northwestern with their own perspective. It's like what Samara said, everybody's here to collaborate, not compete. So everybody really just it wants to embrace what every what their friends are doing to support each other. Um, and that just really leads to an environment where every single person is on their own unique journey, even if they have really similar goals. Rachel, you can go next. If you like. Um, yeah, so I knew I wanted to study writing in college. I loved writing um, and I loved the opportunities that Medill offered with journalism residency and taking classes specifically um, about magazines and arts reporting and those classes I've taken, uh, definitely taken advantage. I've had the opportunity to, uh, to take those classes, but I also knew that I didn't want to study just theater, I, just journalism. I also wanted to study theater. And um, I knew that at many other schools, if I wanted to do both, I would have to give the other one up. And at Northwestern, I've really had the opportunity to not only uh, approach both, but really combine my passions. And I've had the opportunity to marketing direct for different shows and uh, work on publicity and work with uh, student publications to write about those uh, performances. And so I really had the opportunity to combine my passions and be around other people 
who are in the same boat, who have multiple different passions that they've had the opportunity to really come up with uh, such unique paths. Um, and I think that's something that makes Northwestern so special that everyone here is on a different path, but we're all so supportive of one another um, and be, like constantly learning from one another. And my roommates study everything from civil engineering to communication studies to social policy. And every day I'm learning uh, like completely new things about their passions and what they're doing. And that's something that across the board at Northwestern, I've had the opportunity um, to really explore. It feels like the best of both worlds um, that I can pursue both my passions and um, constantly be supported and have um, that community around me um, to not only support me, but for me to support them. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Kendall, you want to go next? Sure. So I guess the short answer and sort of the superficial answer for me is the campus. <laughs> my first tour here, I absolutely fell in love we came around a corner from a building and you could just see Lake Michigan spread out in the distance and all these different rocks, um, not the rock, you have different rocks that line the lake so that students can paint, you don't have to guard them. But it makes this beautiful sort of scene with all these colors in the lake. Um, so that's something I really, really loved and I didn't see at a lot of the other colleges I was touring. I'm a big nature person. Um, on that little Lakeville stretch, you can sit with your laptop literally inches away from the water and still be connected to Northwestern Wi-Fi. So that was something that was pretty cool for me and a big, you know, factor. The campus is absolutely beautiful. It's very walkable. Like people have said, you have sort of that best of both worlds with Evanston and Chicago. So that's sort of like the base, really easy answer. I love the campus, but also like everyone here has said, I appreciated being able that it was okay if I came in and didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I had sort of changed my mind about what I was interested in a lot pretty much constantly throughout high school. Um, I thought I wanted to be a teacher and then I was like, maybe I want to do social work, I don't know. So I found the School of Education and Social Policy and was sort of like worried that they wouldn't accept me if I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. But I ended up meeting with someone there as a prospective student, one of the advisors, and she sort of talked me through that it was okay and actually expected to want to change and add different things. And I felt like she was really valuing me as a person and not just like a statistic on the admissions you know, saying one more social policy student, like it was very much what I wanted to get out of the experience. And I've definitely found that to be true here. Um, that same advisor actually remembered me when I came back as a former, as an actual admitted student. So that was something really sweet and just made me feel very at home here. The fact that I didn't have to, you know, pick this one thing and never change. I was allowed to be me. And also the fact that I could sit out on a beautiful day, um, either winter or, you know, the lake feels, I think the lake's beautiful all year round. So that's a big draw for me as well. Thank you. And tomorrow, you want to finish this off? Yeah, I chose Northwestern for all those reasons as well. But for me, what really stuck out was that even after my four years, I was going to be okay. And Northwestern really makes sure that, you know, each step of the way you are going to be okay. Their career center is amazing. You get lifelong access to it. So even if in 15 years after college, you're like, oh God, what did I do? You can still go back and Northwestern is there for you. The Alumni Association is constantly with us, working with us, making sure that, you know, taking us both on fun field trips, like they sent when we were going to the championship game in football, they paid for us all to go to Indianapolis and see the game, but also they've uh, come and like, I've gotten trips to LA where alumni have just said, hey, I'm working on the set of the Goldbergs and like, do you want to come assistant me for a week? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And they're so open to cold emails, to you connecting. It's really um, a community that watches out for each other and keeps each other afloat. And uh, they love us as much as we love them. And that kind of combination of the school, making sure that you know we have the resources we need, no matter which career we go with, but also the alumni connection to the school um, really sold it for me as a place that cared about me and wanted me to succeed. So that's why I chose Northwestern. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much to all of you who attended. Thank you to our panelists for taking the time out of their day to do this. We really appreciate your answers. Um, just a few recommendations. If you want to look at more panels, um, more information sessions, subscribe to our YouTube channel just to keep up with everything we have to offer. We're trying our best um, in order to, you know, to do everything virtually, but hopefully in the fall, things can be in person, no promises. Um, and also follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We have a TikTok started. Um, I'll be on there in a few days. It's gonna be super fun. Um, it's at Northwestern Admissions. Um, and any other questions you have related to academics, uh, the school itself or about the admissions process, 
please feel free to uh, email ug-admissions at northwestern.edu. We have a bunch of senior admissions counselors who are willing to answer your questions and help you out along the way because I know it can be a very stressful time. But have a very a great rest of your night, day, wherever you are, um, and please stay safe. But have a good one.